In this tutorial, we'll be modeling Biak Engel's Serpentine Pavilion. We'll be using Graph Mapper to create the workflow in Grasshopper. Biak Engel's Serpentine Pavilion consists of two walls made up of fiberglass brick forms. Now these brick forms are hollow rectangular cuboids. And the way they are stacked, they form these wavy, curvy walls. So in our approach, we will first create one side of this wall and we'll make the definition in a way where the graph mapper can be used to manipulate the shape and the curve of each of the walls. To begin, we are going to create two number series that is going to help us create a grid of points. The first number series will have a step of 25 and 25 is the dimension of the brick in X direction that we are going to work with. So each brick has a Z direction, a Z dimension and an X dimension. So this is for X dimension. And we have the same brick over here and we'll change the Y dimension. Now the number of repetitions will vary. I'm going to have 50 number of repetitions in the X direction and 30 number of repetitions in Z direction. We can use this these two number list to create point using construct point. So that's the X and to create point in Z let me change the viewport to perspective. We will use this as an input for Z and graph this. Now the way points are organized in this particular list, they appear like this. We have 30 different rows each row is understood as a separate branch. So these are the separate branches and each branch has 50 points and they are stacked up like this. The topmost row is branch number 30 and the bottommost row is branch number zero. Now we need a way, a method to move all these points in a curved fashion which is to create a movement vector which will follow this direction. For this, I'm going to use a graph mapper. Graph mapper requires a series of numbers between zero and one that can be remapped based on the graph that we're using. We'll be using a sine graph and to create that number series between zero to one, we will use range. The number of steps for this range is going to be 49. Because we want 50 values, one number for each of these points, we are going to use the number 49 because range gives us, uh, the, the number of outputs that we get from range is one more than the number of steps. So we will take the value from here and subtract this by one. So we get a list of numbers between zero and one, and these are 50. Now we pass it through the sine function and we get remapped values over here. Now these remapped values can be used as magnitude to move these points in the Y direction. But the issue is that these magnitudes or these numbers are very small. So we can use a multiplier to scale it up. I'm going to use 250 as a multiplying number. Now these numbers, look good enough to be used as magnitudes with a vector. The vector we're going to use is vector y because 
that's x direction and that's the z direction so that's y direction and the upwards direction is z so we take the move command these are the points we want to move and these are the vectors we want to move it by now we see a constant motion each branch has been moved in by this uh, vector values whereas if you notice in the pavilion the pavilion tends to taper towards the top so what we need is a method by which we can change the value of these motion vectors for each branch for that we will create another range which is a range of values corresponding to each branch since we have 30 branches i'm going to use 30 values as a number and similarly we will just subtract one from it and we will use a different bezier curve this time we'll use a bezier curve that will help us taper the form we will use these numbers and use it as a multiplication with these numbers so we'll take another multiplication factor and we will be crafting this because these numbers correspond to each branch and that represents our motion vector now to make it taper at the top we need to manipulate this graph with some amount of changes we can get the shape that we want and if you want to increase this uh, motion we can scale this up over here and we can play around with this to fine tune the form the way we want okay that looks fine now the next step is to create the rectangles themselves to create the rectangles we will use the rectangle command so we'll go to curve primitive rectangle the plane that we will use is the x z plane these are the origin points the x and the y size were already defined when we were creating the number series so that's 25 and let me change this to 20 and this is 20 so that's the number series x and y that's x that's y now rather than taking the value from series i should be taking it from 20 so that's 20 over here we have all our rectangles once we have the rectangles we need to cull every alternate rectangle the way to do this is to create a dispatch pattern now to explain this further we will pull up the point list again now if you notice the point list dispatch requires a certain pattern on the basis of which it dispatches the list into list a and list b the pattern that we will provide is 0 and 1 which is also the default pattern now the way this works is that once we give this pattern of 0 and 1 the dispatch command will will take the first item the third item the fifth item basically every alternate item and put it in list a and the leftover ones in list b so it will take all the even numbers and put it in list a and take all the odd numbers and put it in list b now because in one branch we have index 0 to 49 and then in the next branch again we start from index 0 
if we use this dispatch pattern, we end up with all the zeros lined up, all the ones lined up, threes lined up, fives lined up like this. And we don't want this. What we need is in one row, we need these ones. In the other row, we want the alternate ones. To do that, we're going to have to shift this dispatch pattern for every branch. So we will create a shift list. That's the list. And the shifting pattern will be created using a series. And the number of branches that we have are 30. So 30 steps, we have a series between zero, zero to 30, zero to 29. And we'll use this as shift input, we'll graph this. And the output we get is a pattern which looks like this. So for the first row, the pattern is going to be zero and one. The next row is going to be one and zero. So the pattern has reversed for every alternate or for every consecutive branch. We use this dispatch pattern and the rectangles that we have are placed in this manner. Now the last step is to extrude. Extrusion will happen in Y direction and we should be aiming for extrusion on both sides. So we will choose a value. So the value can be any number. I'm going to start with 25. That's the extrusion. And then we are also going to move this in the opposite direction of the extrusion by half of this vector. So we can use negative 0 0.5 and that will ensure that the rectangle moves in the opposite direction. We hide this, we hide the rectangle and we have all our rectangles like this. What we notice while we do this is, and let me just hide, yeah. What we notice are these gaps. If we go back to the image, the bricks are extruded in a way where all the bricks that fall on this plane have a constant dimension. Whereas as these rectangles move away from this plane, they increase in depth. Now we need to come up with a number series that will be based on the distance of the rectangle from the imaginary plane, which is this plane. We already have that number series and that number series was the multiplication factor that we used for the motion of our points in the y direction. So that's over here. But because these numbers correspond to the movement of these rectangles, that means the value will be equal to the distance. And that, that much extrusion is too much. So what we're going to do is multiply this with a lower number, let's say 0 0.3, to reduce the size. The other thing that will happen is that because this multiplication factor will give you a value of zero for all the bricks that are close to this plane, you're going to be needing a constant number for all the bricks that coincide with this plane. So that constant number we'll choose as 25. So we'll take 25 plus this number as the extrusion value. And now we have our bricks extruded. One thing that is missed is that we used dispatch and we used only half of the rectangles. So we should be using half of these values only. So we will take the list A from you. And that's our wall number one. We can control the thickness of our bricks by 
reducing this, increasing this, that's completely up to us and it's completely parametric. Once we have this set up, we can take this output as a P rep. For the other side, we just need to copy this entire definition and just reverse the direction of motion of our points. So this was done in positive y direction. We will change this to negative. So that's the negative direction of motion. Now they are identical right now because the graphs are same. So we will change the graph a bit wherein we will try and create an opening on this side and we'll try to create an opening on the other side as well. Yes, and there we have it. Our own parametric definition that replicates B. Arkengel's Serpentine Pavilion. We will just use a custom preview. And a swatch. There you go. Create variable iterations, keep changing the definition, completely up to you.